Hello folks, welcome back. I'm the one, the only, I am a hobo, Tom. You know what day it is? Today's Wednesday. Wow. It just seems like I wake up, go to work, and do this. But tomorrow I have off. Tomorrow I have to hobo, actually. I have to, I have to go do more work. And I got my work schedule for my other job. Oh, yes. I think bad news is next week, From I don't have a day off. Yeah, I work Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Wow. Then I have to figure out. Oh, I do have to figure out early next week what I'm doing for Memorial Day. That's the 25th. So I have stuff to think about. But I'm not here to talk about my issues. I'm here to talk about AEW. And most importantly... I'm here to thank a whole bunch of people in AEW, especially towards the end of the show. Uh, when when I thought I saw someone in an audience that may or may not should have been there. I'll talk about that later. But let's see here. Uh, starts off, Perry Saturn's hair piece. <laughs> he sir earned a six count. Logan! Yes, you two can be like Logan, because Logan's a master of the air guitar for you left me a comment about my one video. Thank you very much, Logan.
you know, if you want to be like Logan, you can always leave this guy a comment in, this, in the comment section about any video. Uh, that was about my Impact R R R R R and R Plus show because access they only care a little bit. You can't show everything. I learned that the hard way. They they said no. We'll give you a warning. They gave me a warning and I and I heated it. I said whoa, tranquilo here. So every so often I can show a little bit of the match, especially especially the the fun parts. So that's not too bad. Um. I can't with AEW because that's TNT. They probably have a $5 million copyright software just like WWE has. They already zonked me once. It took them 24 hours, but still, they zonked me pretty good. AAA doesn't care. One day I have to figure out AAA. Oh, um, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Let me, let me get through these. Cover roll! Remember I say something dirty? Cover roll is always there. Because he's listening to that briefcase boombox. The thing is, Chris Detlander is my favorite female wrestler in the AEW. Mainly for the one fact that she looks like... She looks like a woman. And she has the thought, She has the sankly size. Calamino eyes. Knocking me out with those American thighs. And boy, does she like to spread those thighs. And she's lucky she wears some nice, sizable undergarment. So that's oh yeah I'll get I'll get to that next that's I'll get to that then and then boring Corin you sir win by dirty pin Sasa Shanks, 316. You. I don't know if, if, if he or she. You just can crawl out of here. Because I said it first. <laughs> the Zitz Nerf. That's an interesting name. I can just know. Again, I said it first. But you, sir, are definitely a member with that name. You, sir, deserve to mean the El Generico Band. And then big smoke. Holy shit. Well, let's get into some AEW proper. You'll see what I'm talking about as, as we go on this whole show. Because I'll say what, AEW has the best empty arena show? It seems they're letting the family and friends kind of space themselves out in the front section. They have the wrestlers ringside, which is pretty cool. They still have the gun club, um, some faces. I think Colt Command was there. Uh, on the other side, again, you kind of have, have more of the heels. Uh, Sean Spears was there. Again, so a couple things though. AEW is doing this right. AEW, if they really want to have 
Man, those tickets would sell out so quick, though. They could go in Daly's place every fourth seat. It would still seem pretty full. Unless you got certain packages. But yeah, I, I see, I can see AEW coming back, having fans first. I think Daly's place, if you can do it, because it's that amphitheater type area, I think they could get away with that more there. Although the WWE could do it in the performance center, because that's really WWE. Like, they can just say, you, out. Like, they just won't escort you back to the seat and, and say, shame on you. They'll say, this is our place. You, out. So, WWE could do that to a degree. WWE has to figure out that they need to have some kind of fans. I mean, it was... I thought it was great when, like, Asuka would be on commentary. Don't get me wrong. Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe is so good on commentary. But when you had Asuka being on guest commentary, or even Nikki Cross being on guest commentary, there was... So much enthusiasm. And let's see here. Um, oh, well, I'll get to that to that Saturday. Because new Sami Zayn's no longer Intercontinental Champion. We know about that. He's vacated the belt. Um, Backlash is coming up. I'll get to I'll get to that more on probably Friday. But again, with AEW, they do things. The presentation spot on. And the rest, the, the tag team wrestling is amazing. The singles matches are really good. Even their women's division. I'm beginning to warm up to the women's division. Although I think I saw this match a month ago. AEW, are you trying to pull a fast one on the hobo himself? On hobo Tom? You trying to trick me and trick your audience? I swear I saw this one match a month ago. But I'll get into that as I talk about the show. So we start off with Jake Roberts and Lance Archer. And Jake Roberts just just gives a promo, rips rips Randy uh, Brandy Rhodes, rips on Cody Rhodes. Says, "Yeah, I would do it all again. In fact, I would keep Brandy to keep me warm at night." Oh, you can't do that. That's another man's wife you're talking about. Even I don't even I don't step over those lines. I come pretty close, but I don't cross that line. I just, I just say she has boobies and and booty. I never said about. It ever being anywhere near Brandy Rhodes. Um, and Cody comes in with a truck and his truck has has the nightmare family, has a, has the American nightmare thing painted on the on, on the hood. Stone Cold 316 you're not Cody Rhodes. And instead of taking that truck all the way to ringside he kind of just runs over a, a plastic garbage can and, and a barricade. Stone Cold would have taken that thing all the way to ring. He would have made sure that he could take that truck to ringside. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, so then Archer and Cody Rhodes begin to brawl eventually. And Cody does some hair pulling to try and get Archer's attention. It was a pretty good just brawl. Uh, Jake first said, no, 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 no. We we're going to save this. So that's a good start to AEW. Now we start off with the tag team division. This is what AEW is known for. They start off with a whole promo. It's like, this is now season two of AEW. They start off saying, oh, all the tag team divisions. Although they were missing a few tag teams. They were missing the Butcher, the Blade, and the Bunny. I don't know where the Bunny is. Although they've been teasing the Bunny a lot in Impact, though. Maybe, maybe I'll have some buyer's regret. What other tag team were they missing? Did they mention, yeah, I think they mentioned Private, yeah, they mentioned Private Party. They have a whole bunch of tag teams. AEW has such a stacked tag team division. I think the only thing, yeah. Yeah, they mentioned the Lucha Brothers. Yeah, they, they didn't mention everyone. All except for Hangman and Adam Page. Except with the exception that he won the belt, but hasn't been on TV since. Ever since he started his drinking habit. This is just cool, so I really don't care. I just need to stay up for a little bit more. Let this thing work. I have to go clean some dishes. I have to make the house look pretty for next week. That's all other issue. So we start off in a tag team match. And I was shocked they had this as a tag team match. It was a Jurassic Express taking on best friends. 
This is fun. It starts off really as a classic match, and the rope running was so good by both uh, Chuck Taylor and Jungle Boy Jacko. Um, yeah, Jungle Boy. Hey, that's so fun. The way they do stuff. Uh, then uh, Trent and Luchasaurus get in. Luchasaurus is way too strong, even for Trent. Uh, Jungle Boy, the rope running. However, that got countered into a big belly to back. Parts of this match did feel a little botchy, though. I don't know what it was. It just was. Uh, there were some parts where it's just like, oh, this is like a catch. Like, like please catch me. I think I screwed up. Uh, there was assisted flatliner. Trent cut off uh, Jungle Boy from hitting the double team move with Luchasaurus. Then Jungle Boy and Chuck Taylor trade blows. And then Ray Fe like Orange Cassidy was was going to at the end. Ray Phoenix was going to tease. Um, I'm sorry, not Ray Phoenix, but uh, Orange Cassidy was going to tease something. And then Ray Phoenix, Ray Phoenix just kicked the head off of Orange Cassidy. I don't even know where he come from. He's like all of a sudden you're like, whoa, what's Ray Phoenix doing here? They're making his presence felt. I have a funny feeling he's suicide. I don't know. He might be moonlighting over there. Impact. You know. He, he, Again, suicide does that that rope jumping stuff, and that makes me wander and question stuff. And then MJF just runs Jungle Boy into the post, getting because of the distraction. Uh, Chuck Taylor hit the awful waffle. The best friends uh, pick up the win. They of course hug it out, and then on the outside, Warlow comes out of nowhere and just kills. Oh, poor Marco Stunt. Marco Stunt be dead. That might set up a match. But again, the best friends won. This was a good opening match. It's a good cheeseburger of a match. And there's a little promo how, how John Moxley's just pissed off that Brody Lee just stole his belt. That's not cool, Brody Lee. It's a crime be punished for that and then <laughs> yeah this 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 match was kind of, this match was actually kind of fun probably for all the wrong reasons penelope ford taking on chris statlander taking on Britt baker taking on the karushita wait a second i swear before all this covid 19 stuff happened they had this match before in fact i think i saw this wait a second did i see this match i might have seen no Oh, no, because uh, Riho was involved. But, no, I, I swear, I've seen this match before. This is like a replay of it. I'll tell you what, folks. Penelope before the waxes. Because she was in that outfit and she did that split. Yeah. she She's clean as a baby's bottom down there. The front part, too. So that was interesting. And then... And, and, so, so Chris, that so when, when they're out there, uh, Penelope Ford and Chris Sandler are pretty close, and Britt Baker comes on. No one likes Britt Baker, which is good because I don't like Britt Baker either. It's not boo Britt Baker automatically yet. She's kind of growing on me slowly, but still, I remember early Britt Baker. That was just boring Britt Baker. She's she's gotten more interesting at least. Uh, I give credit when credit is due. The only person I will always boo. Boo, Sonya Deville. Boo, boo, boo. You're even on AEW, and I'm still going to boo Sonya Deville. Boo, Sonya Deville. Okay, I, I, need to, I need to relax a little bit. I need to <sighs> breathe. I'm talking about AEW. Not boo, Sonya Deville. I understand. Uh, so Chris Tatlander, she, she tried to boop. Penelope P. Ford, she would go, boop. Penelope P. Ford doesn't have none of it. She knocked her out of the ring. A Britt Baker went, went right to work on Hikaru Shida because, remember, Hikaru Shida kind of got her in the nose. Britt Baker wanted to go after the teeth of Hikaru Shida. Uh, <laughs> Chris Allen got no boop. Uh, uh, so Shida and Britt Baker go at it. Uh, Penelope P. Ford got, goes out. Outside after Chris Stantliner, she's stuck on the outside. Chris Stantliner comes in. Britt Baker's like, oh, please. And she's like, boop. Chris Stantliner was having no boop whatsoever from Britt 
from Britt Baker. In fact, she started to uh, rake the nose of Britt Baker. The broken nose. That was great, though. And, wow, there goes my camera again. That's okay. It will eventually come back. But then they double team Britt Baker. That's great. The suplex and kicks. Uh, Ford got caught after she, she tried a top rope move. Uh, and then Ford, again, got tossed out, beat up. Uh, she hit the missile drop here, which is pretty good. They really highlighted Penelope Ford a lot in the smash, which is pretty good. Uh, and then, of course, there was going to be the spot. Kip Sabian held, I think, Sheeta along the side. Or was it Chris Statlin? She, uh, he was holding one of them. So Penelope before could wallop her. But then, you know what? She didn't She didn't hit the elbow. She didn't hit, hit, hit Kip Sabian either. Instead, they were playing tonsil hockey. Hey, folks. Hey. Go get a room. Or, or make a video or something. But, so that was pretty cool. He, he, he's like, damn it, get a room. And there was no Poison Rana. Chris Statlander needs to learn how to do a Poison Rana. Because she just like did a flip. And, or was it Penelope Ford or, or one of them tried to do a Poison Penelope Ford, I think, tried to do the Poison Rana like Chris Statlander. And Chris Statlander just flopped. This shows a little <sighs> ring rust. On Chris Statlander's part, I think. I don't know. Britt Baker, not exactly too sure about Penelope Ford. I don't know how long she's been wrestling, so. But but the weird thing is, uh, so in the ring, Hikaru Shida and Penelope Ford go at it. Uh, Hikaru Shida is actually pretty strong. She actually muscled up Penelope Ford first in a, like, a torture rack position. I'm like, ooh. GTS time, but no, then she like flipped her over on her shoulders, which is pretty tough to do for a, for a grown human being. Uh, probably Penelope Ford and Hikaru Shida. Penelope Ford might have like five or ten extra pounds, only because her tits are bigger. But they're the same size, so it's can't. I guess it's not that bad. So she flipped over. They're like a GTS backbreaker. That looked. She just like flipped her over her head, ran her knee. Ouch. And then hit the hit the shiniest wizard onto Penelope before knocked her out. And while on the outside, like Britt Baker put Chris Statlander in like the submission. And Britt Baker has to learn the rules of wrestling. In order for the submission to count, it has to be in the ring. And I swear, every time Chris Statlander fell on her butt, she would just spread her legs. And and thankfully, she she wears some pretty decent bottoms. Because if not, folks, we'd be seeing a lot more of Chris Statlander. But I'll tell you what, Chris Statlander, she's number one in my book, though. Again, this was another fun match. And I was shocked, because this is like the second time in a row they've had a good women's match. This was a cheeseburger of a match. Then Shug D came out. Um, he's the one that everyone, called, everyone refers to as Pineapple Beat. And he's going to fight Chris Jericho later. So that's that. So here, let's restart my camera now. It's a natural break. And we have Ortiz and Santana. Yes. Taking on Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy. This is weird. Uh, Kenny Omega, he just gets jumped by Ortiz and Santana. They just want to start the match. And all of a sudden, yes! Brother Nero, this is Damascus! Uh, Matt Hardy comes on his Damascus gear. He just starts fighting poor Santana. And I think he drew blood. Because I know he, he, he bit him in the ear first. Then he bit his hand. He bit his leg. And the next shot you see of him, he has like a little like trickle of blood. So I don't know if if he bit himself or if Santa said, "Oh shit, you bit me," and pulled his hand out. And, and I don't know. 
again, it's like that one, that one time when I was in college and that, 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 that girl kissed me, she had a tongue ring on. And this was before like tongue piercings became like a thing. Cause I thought it was pretty cool that I had a tattoo. She thought it was cool that I had a tattoo, but she went up me. She got it. She had a tongue ring. She had a tongue stud. Yeah. I, I've learned about those tongue things. I'll tell you what, she kissed me and, 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 and she went to go, go, go slip me something in my mouth. And, and that stud hit my tooth and I swear to God, I almost bit her tongue off. And that freaked me out so much. To this day, I will still never, ever date a woman with a tongue piercing. That's, that's wrong. I don't care what they say. I'm not a fan of lip piercings. Because that, that just seems like hard to kiss. To. I don't want to kiss metal. That's, that's weird. It's like kissing a computer. That's just wrong. Bottom part here. I don't know. I don't mind the ear studs. Like the all around, all around the cartilage. The nose thing, as long as it's small, is okay. And as long as it doesn't look like a, a bull ring, because that just looks weird. And then I, 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 I don't know. who would want to pinch their skin, put a needle through it, and just leave it there? I've never understood that. That and any piercing down there. Nothing sharp goes down there, folks, at least on me. And even when I do so, semi manscape, I'll tell you what, I focus. Nothing gets cut down there. Because no one's given me any any free advertising money yet. So, so, so I'm not going to do any product placement for anyone. But, and then, uh, navel piercings are, are, okay. are okay. See, what I always want to know with the women when they get their navel pierced, they have to, like, like weird things happen to, to bellies and pregnancies. So, again, it's just one of those things. It's it's not that natural to put holes and metal in through your skin on your body. I understand if you need a metal plate in your arm because you broke an ulna. Or the radius or ulna you broke, you need a metal plate there. Or you need a polycarbonate like, like weird modern plastic polymer thing in your arm that i understand like i understand putting screws into bones to keep the bone in place again you break your femur you need some screws to to to, to, to fix it that makes sense and, and you can't see the screws either but just to like oh wow i still have this like to put this to pinch off some skin and to drive. Oh, this is a dirty nail. But to drive this nail through there. The piercings I get, maybe because they've been around for longer, but like, I don't know. That's just ugh, not my thing. Some guys dig it, some guys dig weird stuff. Maybe one day I'll tell you stories about weird stuff, and I'm like, dude, it's all you. So I knew one friend that that used to love watching his girlfriend go to the bathroom. Not this guy. I actually have, well, behind the door of wrestling, that's that's the common bathroom or my girlfriend's bathroom. And I just use the one in the garage. Unless it's a quick trip to the bathroom. But other than that, though, no. No, just just close the door. Oh, man, you're just saying me naked. It's like, no. But what if I'm married? No. I don't know. It just might be me. Who knows? But I digress way too much. So, yeah, so we talk about blood. Uh, then Ortiz goes all tiger style. On the back of Kenny Omega. Uh, again, your real blood. 
and then poor Ortiz gets sent back into the ring area. Um, Kenny Omega, the cool leapfrog bulldog. I like that. Then the double teamwork by Omega and Matt Hardy. Again, they did the double suplex. Hardy with a side effect. That's great. Wow, the classic tag team move of the face of the boot. Kenny Omega puts his boot up on the top rope. Uh, Matt Hardy drives Santana. Santana's like the brunt of this match for some reason. And or or Ortiz is a little bit bigger, but not by much. He's not what I would call the big man of the team. Let's see here. Santana. Again, Santana and Ortiz do that Boston clutch. That's great on Omega. And then Ortiz is such a cheat. You just boom. The thumb, the thumb right to the eye. That's great. It makes no qualm about that. Again, Tiger style. Uh, man, it's another side effect. And he begins to clean house. Omega flies over the top like he does. There's a twist of fate. Antenna. There's a rolling cutter into a shotgun drop kick, and then a step up cannibal. Again, Ortiz and Santana, LAX, they do a lot of great chain wrestling tag team tandem moves. That's what makes them so enjoyable to watch. Then, let's see here. A Guevara comes out with a neck brace. Like, what's he going to do in a steel chair? Matt Hardy just dispatches him pretty quickly. Then Kenny Omega hits, like, some uh, gets involved a little bit. And there's more uh, tandem work between Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy. Uh, Matt Hardy hit, like, a draping cutter. That was kind of a weird weird end, but I'll take it. Overall, this was still a, probably the most the best match of the night. This was a surf and turf match. Then there's Taz, the human suplex machine, trying to talk to Darby Allen. You know what? Taz should enter this ladder match and just go after it and just suplex Darby Allen and just. Tazplex, Darby Allen all over the place. Let him know. Let him know what a real suplex looks like with Tazplex. Lexi's back there with her Karushita. Nyla Rose walks up. Nyla Rose makes it super obvious because in one belt, she, in one hand, she's holding the belt. Her other hand is very clearly, and I'm not standing up, but you can tell that my arm is behind my back. And generally, if, if I'm the heel and holding one belt. And you can clearly see my arm is behind my back. Just run. You know, nothing good's happened. She's like, hey, 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 Mishita. I found your stick. Whap! Right over the head. I found your cane. Yeah, I think she called it a stick. She found her, her um, kendo stick. Whatever. When it's that, listen. But there's there's also the time when you just kind of uh, yep yeah, it's just time to ah I got my foreign weapon now my got my blade out of my trunks yeah it's getting to be that kind of obvious and it's not even that funny although when Princess Kim released tough the brass knuckles back into her bra. That was kind of cool. Next time she just has to kind of reach in there. The referee has his back turn. And, and stuff it back into her bra. That's the way it should work. Because yeah, you can probably tell that a woman has something hidden in her trunks. Unless her Nyla Rose. Allegedly. But then we have MJF taking Lee Johnson. Yeah, this was a squash match. It was fun. MJF, he just beats up Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson got his one shopping. And that just seemed to annoy MJF. Uh, they go to the outside. MJF power bombs Lee Johnson to the ring apron. Throws him back in the ring. Uh, puts on the Fujiwara armbar. His music plays. Cut my music. Delivers a promo. And yeah, MJF won. He beat Lee Johnson. You'd expect this. Lee Johnson did get his offense, and he got the one chop in. That's all he needs. It's a ham sandwich of a match.
And then Suge D, Pineapple Pete shows up. Chris Jericho shows up with a baseball bat. You knew something was up because Chris, Chris Jericho didn't even take off his shirt. Uh, Pineapple Pete goes right after Chris Jericho, though. I'll give, I'll give him his, you know what, I'm going to upgrade this match. So I'll give his, him his due. He, he takes him corner to corner. However, it only took one Judas effect by Chris Jericho. The match is over. Um, yeah, and then he challenged the Elite to a stadium stampede match. I guess that's just like a five-on-five -five brawl. Who knows? Vanguard 1 shows up, bring back the t-shirt. <laughs> the match itself was a, was, it was a ham sandwich. I mean, Pineapple Pete did what Pineapple Pete was going to do. Chris Jericho beat him anyway. And you knew that was going to happen. But then Vanguard 1 shows up um, with, with the, uh, with the, like, the infant size. Inner Circle t-shirt. Uh, Vanguard 1 was obviously wanted. He had the worn out in, in, in seven different states. I have the death sentence in 12 systems. Uh, you'll be dead. But uh, So Vanguard 1 gets surrounded. And then Chris Jericho with said baseball bat whacks Vanguard 1. Vanguard 1's dead. Matt Hardy's actually visibly saddened by this. And let's see. This leads us to the main event of the evening. It was Rhodey Lee with all his minions, the, the Dark Order, taking on Christopher Daniels with SCU. Because Jacksonville is the worst city ever. And Christopher Daniels versus Brody Lee. This is fun enough. Uh, Chris, Christopher Daniels, he just he, he did one shot, and that just seemed to annoy and make Brody Lee upset. Uh, Christopher Daniels went off the rope. Try to splash. Not going to happen. Burley's too big and powerful. Hits him with a power slam. Again, everything Christopher Daniels did, um, te technical-wise, if it was a splashy move, Brody Lee just seemed to, like, pick him up and carry him and, and like, just impose as well on him. Uh, Christopher Daniels did get tossed into a barricade. And then, although he actually did draw... I'm sorry, the other way around. He actually threw Brody Lee into the barricade that went to the outside, hit the Arabian moonsault. And also, I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Coo -coo -coo -choo. Then Brody Lee again, when they get back in the ring, oh, it's just a classic eye, eye rake, the sidewalk slam. Down the counters with a spike DDT and Burley sold it like a champ, the way it should be sold. Then, oh, I was shocked. Christopher Daniels went for the Koji clutch. That was impressive. I haven't seen that in a long time. That was that was good to see. And then everyone got in the ring. But, however, no one touched the two competitors because the Dark Order, they went after um, Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Scott on the outside. Then they brawled it into the ring, but they just kind of stayed Within their own thing, they really didn't hit Christopher Daniels or Brody Lee. So they just kind of like, so you have Brody Lee and Christopher Daniels here. And then just this, this whole fight, like the old fashioned storm cloud, like going around the two main cartoon characters. That's kind of what happened. Uh, and then Christopher Daniels hit the Fallen Angel, or what's, it's all, what I've seen it as, it's the fairy tale ending. Only got a one count, the best moonsault ever. Got a two count. And then Brody Lee did a catch power bomb when when Chris Fadan tried to fly off into a discus larry. And then Gian Moxley comes up. So Brody Lee wins the match. He demands his belt, and uh number 10 is holding it. Or number 10 comes back in the ring, and of course the minions come out with a belt. So this actually was a fun match. This was a cheeseburger match. Then John Moxley comes out from the crowd. Now I, I don't, I don't know if the AEW did this on purpose, or if John Moxley did it on purpose. John Moxley will troll WWE if he wants to, but I swear, Renee Young was in the crowd, 
or Renee Ambrose, or or whatever her last name is, Renee whoever, was in the crowd. Because there was a tall, Canadian-looking, blonde-haired woman in a red dress who looked... 99.999% like like a certain ring announcer and interviewer in the WWE known as Renee Young. Indeed. Could this be getting back at NXT for having for announcing Brett Baker at the takeover match? Or could it be just John Moxley just being John John Moxley, not not giving two hoots about anything, and his wife just wanted to see her husband wrestle. And the because the the thing is, I don't think it was deliberate, because the camera really didn't linger on her, but John Moxley kind of walked right across where she was sitting, so like the camera. Just kind of kept on following John Moxley, but the problem was, as the cameras following John Moxley, hey, I'm Renee. So John Moxley starts over here, and then as he goes, the camera follows. The camera really doesn't stop, but you can't see it from my. Well, actually, I'll do this. Here we go. So, so here's hi, I'm Renee Young. And well, actually, hi, hi, Renee Young. So, camera's following John Moxley. Hey, oh, wait, look at me, Apple Blood, Renee Young. So, it didn't linger, though. It just kept on moving very smoothly. But it's just one of those things where I don't know if it was planned or not. I, I Again, I'm only 99.99% sure it was Renee Young. If it wasn't Renee Young, though, someone looks exactly like her. And you could almost tell it was her. Because she didn't have... She looked semi-dressed up. But then this is a weird time. One last story because I'm going to end this video. When I went to the mall, because they finally opened up the mall. And I actually have to go to the bookstore on Saturday. I have to... I have to get some stuff this Saturday. I have, to, I have to go to the bookstore and get the one book I wanted to get. So I went to the mall last Saturday and I swear there were like mainly women but they were all dressed up to go to the mall. I had on jean shorts, my sandals, my macho man shirt that, that I so proudly wear. I just looked like I'm going to the mall. But there were some women that were like literally dressed up in not so much Sunday clothes, but like club, like I'm going out to the club clothes, like just to go to the mall because it's the first time in forever or what feels like forever. Actually in like two months. No, actually it's been like about, about a month. Mall. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, about two months, about a month and a half, actually more a month and a half. But the mall's been open. Granted, the mall was never a thing. The mall wasn't that crowded. It just looked like a normal day in the Blue Jamal. But the difference was people were dressed up to go to the mall. That's the thing, though, I guess. They just wanted to go out to the mall. They were probably like me. Honestly, I, I honestly wanted to see what was open. Well, I had to collect the aluminum. Because once I know when I was at the bank... The mall's right next to the bank. I saw cars were there. If cars were there, there's there's, there's, there's there's dirty, drunk slobs there that throw their aluminum out. And I go take their aluminum. And that's how I make, make some money. But then I figure, you know what? It's Saturday. I don't have anything else to do. I have to go get my aluminum anyway. I'll go check out, see what's open in the mall. And I was shocked. I think about half the stores were open. Mainly a lot of the smaller stores. But even then, it was a weird. It, it's just a weird mix of stuff that's open and what's closed. Mister Dunderbox was open, but the food court was closed. The bookstore was open. 
the big JC Penney's Macy's Dillard's were closed. But then like like the one apparel store was open, but Buckle wasn't open. Uh Aerospile wasn't open, but this store was was open. There's there's no rhyme or reason to it. But again, some of the women were pretty spiffy looking. They were dressed up. Like, I'm going to show myself off to the boys in the mall. Like at the club. I don't know. But that's it. So again, oh, I'm sorry I kind of droned on to that point. But again, this was a good cheeseburger. AEW Dynamite. And that was it. Um, I know they have the NWA Super Bar Power going on. From what I saw of it, it looked like they just kind of like recapped everything. So I'm probably not going to do a review of that. Tomorrow I'm off. From this at least. Uh, Friday I do my normal SmackDown show. Friday's going to suck for me. I have so much. I have work. I have to go to the grocery. I have to go to the bank. I have to go to the grocery store. To watch SmackDown Pizza Hut night. Um, Saturday I'm off. Sunday I'm off. Monday I do stuff. And then next week, I don't know if it's going because I'm actually scheduled next Saturday. Dave AEW's Double or Nothing. I'm scheduled to work, but their show doesn't start until eight. And I don't know if I'm going to do either a review or a live stream. I have to figure stuff out. I have to finagle stuff. I have to find that GoPro camera too. Let's see if I can hook that into to this computer. That'd be cool. So I could do that and watch that and figure out stuff. Uh, I've have, I've have stuff I've have, I've have stuff to figure out, man. I might get some of the stuff figured out tomorrow. Well, thank everyone again. If you would like to be like Logan, get your own shout out video. You can always leave a comment to this guy, Hobo Tom. Uh, this video should be going up tomorrow. I have to do some editing, edit, and then get it processed. So it'll be up probably tomorrow morning ish. Yeah, because I'm pretty good about that. So I'd like to, again, thank everyone. Everyone, have a good night. And good morning. Bye.